So in this lecture, we are going to see the conjugate beam method and some general and elementary problems on conjugate beam method we will solve for calculating the deflection in statically determinate beams. So conjugate beam is an engineering method to determine slope and deflection in a beam. Our conjugate beam is defined as an imaginary beam with the same dimension as that of the real beam loaded with m upon ei diagram of the real beam so we'll see yet see what is m upon ei diagram of the real beam and load there are two things first thing is the dimension of the beam is similar to that of the real beam second thing is the load load on the conjugate beam is nothing but it is the bending moment diagram divided by ei of the real beam the two theorems conjugate beam method are first one is for slope the second one is for deflection how to calculate slope using conjugate beam the slope at a point in the real beam is equal to shear at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam it is very simple slope at a point in the real beam is equal to shear at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam similarly the displacement at any point in the real beam is equal to moment at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam. So if you want to calculate slope at any point, you have to calculate shear force at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam. And similarly for calculating deflection on the real beam, we have to calculate bending moment on the conjugate beam. So there are two major steps that we use in conjugate beam. First step is to set up an imaginary beam this beam is, is called as conjugate beam so the problem which is given in the question is the real beam and then we have to set up an imaginary beam the next thing is we have to calculate shear force and bending moment at various point in the conjugate beam so, conjugate beam method are guided by following 10 rules so rule 1 is the length of the conjugate beam so this is the length of the conjugate beam it is same as the length of the actual beam same as the length of actual beam the load on the conjugate beam so this is the conjugate beam what is the load it is the m upon ei diagram of the real beam so what we do we consider a real beam we make the bending one diagram and put it on the our conjugate beam for each existing support condition of the real beam there will be a corresponding support condition for the conjugate beam so suppose the existing support condition in the actual or real beam is fixed so in conjugate beam it will be free so fixed end becomes free and free end becomes fixed simply support remains simply supported so in case of cantilever we have to change the ends but a simply supported beam remains simply supported so we can read it a fixed end for a real beam turns out to be a free end for the conjugate beam and similarly free end for a real beam turns out to be a fixed end for the conjugate beam whereas the simply supported beam keeps simple support for the conjugate beam suppose this is a pin joint at pin we know that there will be rotation but deflection will be zero so in conjugate beam for deflection to be zero moment should be zero so how we achieve that moment is zero at the support so we should continue with the pin joint right and this is the real beam now deflection vertical deflection will be zero vertical deflection will be zero and there will be rotation so how will allow this deflection to be zero deflection is zero in real beam is equal to moment is zero in conjugate beam now this is interesting now at fixed end we find that slope and deflection both are zeros theta is also zero and deflection is also zero so corresponding to slope shear should be zero and corresponding to deflection moment should be zero so how we do it simply we remove the support because at the support there will be vertical reaction as well as moment at the support there will be vertical reaction and moment so how we remove this support and moment simply by converting this fixed end to a free end. 
now we change it suppose the end is free so it is going to have some so rotation as well as deflection so corresponding to rotation we should have a value of shear so this if this end is fixed there will be one uh, vertical reaction that will be equal to shear and to calculate deflection we should calculate the bending moment so bending moment will be equal to the moment at the fixed end so like this way what we do we change the free end to fi fixed end and fixed end to free end these concepts we will see at the later time so same thing uh, simply supported beams remain simply supported fixed end becomes fixed end become free and free end becomes fixed uh, this fixed beam for the analysis in conjugate remove the support both the supports we have to remove now this will talk about the slope and deflection of the real beam so the real beam conjugate beam and even conjugate beam they obeys the law of static equilibrium right the slope of the real beam at any cross section is equal to the shear force so again we are telling the same thing slope of the real beam it is corresponding to shear force at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam similarly deflection in real beam is equal to bending moment at the corresponding point on the conjugate beam so for the better clarity of the concept we will solve some numericals some basic numericals based on conjugate beam and this is a given simply supported beam with a central point load point load is acting at the midpoint of the uh, simply supported beam so using conjugate beam method we have to calculate slope at the supports a and b and vertical deflection at c so from the symmetry of load and geometry of the structure we can say that theta a is equal to theta b theta a is equal to theta b so we have to calculate theta a and deflection at c so let us uh, enhance our understanding of the structure and this, since this is a simply supported structure we can say that deflection at the support will be zero so deflection at a and deflection at b will be zero because there are supports it will be like this because of the load the beam will deflect like this points will be rotating like this so from the symmetry we can uh, we have already seen that theta a is equal to theta b another thing is under the point load there will be maximum deflection deflection will be maximum under point load and if we try to draw a tangent at this point we get a horizontal line so slope is zero when deflection is maximum this is true only in case of simply supported beam this is not in case of cantilever beam this is our real beam simply supported beam subjected to point load at the mid spot we calculate the reaction so uh, this is the point load at the midpoint so reaction will be w by 2 draw a bending moment diagram of this so we know that at support simply support the bending moment will be zero so at both the supports bending moment will be zero and what will be the general equation of bending moment suppose we want to find bending moment equation at this point so it will be w x by 2 so at x is equal to zero bending moment will be 0 at x is equal to L by 2 bending moment will W by 2 into L by 2 that works out to be WL by 4 so we will get a bending moment equation like this under the point load we will have the maximum ordinate the value will be WL by 4 now next step will be simply divide this WL by 4 with EI so we will call this as M upon EI diagram of the real beam so what we have done we have drawn a bending moment diagram then we have divided the value of ei for the entire portion the value is constant ei is constant so we will get similar shape no change in the curvature of the m upon ei diagram will be there it will be similar to the bending moment diagram now what we do we will form a conjugate beam so conjugate beam has length equal to the length of real beam so it is having length l and it has load equal to the bending moment diagram upon ei so m upon ei diagram is the load of the conjugate beam next thing is we have to set the support so support will interchange a will come to b and b will come to a or else we can simply say that 
simply supported real beam remains simply supported in conjugate beam so this is our conjugate beam uh, we are interested to find the value of theta a and we are interested to find the value of delta c simple statement is if you find want to find slope in a real beam find shear force in, on the corresponding point on the conjugate beam a point is in real beam so corresponding point is a dash b is in real beam the corresponding point in conjugate beam is b dash likewise for real beam position is c so corresponding point will be c dash suppose i want to find the value of theta a now what i have to do i have to find the shear force in the corresponding point in the conjugate beam it is so simple right then what we do forget about this now we have to calculate shear force at the support so we know that shear force at the support simply supported beam will be equal to the reaction only so actually we have to find the ra dash value so by using equations of equilibrium so we go with sigma fy is equal to 0 so how we write sigma fy is equal to 0 we will write ra dash plus rb dash is equal to total vertical load so how to find the load total load of this triangular or uvl uniformly varying load so it is simple we have to simply find the area of this triangle so how we find the area is equal to area of the m upon ei diagram so area of triangle is nothing but half base into height so what is the base total length is l so we'll write that half base into height so what is height height is wl by 4 upon ei when we solve it we will get wl square upon ati so ra dash plus rb dash is equal to total load that is w l square upon ati so from symmetry we can say that ra dash and rb dash will be equal how because this triangle is symmetrically placed so we can say that from symmetry ra dash is equal to rb dash is equal to half of the total load so what is the total load it is wl square upon ati so half of 1 by 8 is 1 by 16 so our answer is ra dash is equal to rb dash is equal to wl square upon 16 ei so this will be our theta a but rb dash and ra dash will have the magnitude wl square upon 16 ei but the direction will be different here the slope is clockwise rotation and on the B side it will have an anti-clockwise rotation. So one side will get clockwise rotation and on the other side we will get the anti-clockwise rotation. Now we come to deflection. For calculating deflection we will deal with bending moment. So deflection at any point on the real beam is equal to moment or bending moment at the corresponding point in the conjugate beam. So simply we have to say that if you are interested to find deflection at C, so what we can write delta C is equal to nothing but bending moment at C dash. C is in real beam and C dash is in conjugate beam. So how we find, how to take um, moment of this force? It is nothing but area into X bar. Bending moment at C dash will ask our observer to stand here and he will consider the forces of the left side of his section so now there are two forces one is ra dash and other is this triangular load so we can write ra dash into ra dash into l by 2 this is sagging because of this force the beam will have tendency to bend up like this so this is a positive bending one so we'll write ra dash into l by 2 and because of this triangular load because of this triangular load the beam will have tendency to bend like this so it is having the shape like this so we will call it negative bending moment so minus what is the total load it will be equal to area of this triangle and from where it will act it will act from its cg that is x bar so how we will calculate this a1 it is very simple area half base into height so half what is the base base is l by 2 and what is the height height is still wl by 4ei 
so area is equal to W L square upon 16 Now we have to find where the centroid of this triangle will lie. So centroid of this triangle will be somewhere here. From the height it will be V by 3. From the height it will be V by 3 and from the vertex it will be 2V by 3. From this point it will be 2V by 3 and from the this side it will be V by 3. So we are taking moment, bending moment at this point. So this distance is going to be V by 3. What is the value of B? It is L by 2. So V by 3 of L by 2 is nothing but L by 6. So we will substitute this value in place of A1 X1. So we will get this. R dash in place of R dash we will put WL square upon 16EI into L by 2 minus WL square by 16EI into L by 6. We get the bending moment at C is equal to WL cube upon 48EI. So, so our answer is there delta C deflection at C which is equal to bending moment at C dash is nothing but WL cube upon 48EI. So these are the standard values uh, theta A, theta B and delta C you should remember. We are still using a simply supported beam to understand the concept of conjugate beam to calculate slope and deflection at and uh, we know that deflection will be zero at support A and B. So we can say that theta sorry delta A is equal to delta B is equal to zero and theta A is not equal to theta B. In the previous question the point load was centrically placed. Because of the symmetry theta A is was equal to theta B and uh, in this case the deflection will be something like this. So theta A will be different and theta B will be different. Theta B is going to be greater than theta A because we can say that load is towards the support B so more deflection will take place at Another point to remember is slope is zero where deflection is maximum. So maximum deflection will be under the point load. So at this point deflection will be maximum and slope will be zero. So first step is to develop a bending moment diagram. So, so at support simple at in a simply supported beam at support the bending moment is zero. And at this point the bending moment from right hand side of the section will be 6 into 3 18 or if we calculate it from the left hand side the bending moment will be 2 into 9 so from the either side we will get the value as 18 or else we can use this uh, simple formula WAB by L and we will name it some this part will name it as A and other part will name it as B and the total length is L so the formula for the bending moment ordinate under point load is WAB by L. Now we have to make M upon EI diagram. So in this simply we have to divide the ordinate by EI to convert it into conjugate beam. So conjugate beam will have the same length as the length of real beam and it will have load of M upon EI diagram of the real beam. So this bending moment diagram or M upon EI diagram is for this load. And now this bending moment diagram M upon EI diagram will be the load for conjugate beam. And last thing what we have to do is to change the support. Support at A will come to support at B and vice versa. And we can say that simply supported beam remains simply supported in conjugate beam. Now this is our conjugate beam and I have changed the name RA dash and RB dash. This is a triangular load and what we can do, we can divide this into two triangles. Triangle like this A1 and A1 and uh, what will be the area of this triangle? The base is 9, the height is 18 upon EI. So area 1 will be half base into height. So it will be 81 upon EI and it will act somewhere from the centroid of this triangle. And the other area is A2. If we calculate the base uh, area, so it will be half base into height, base is 3, height is 18 upon EI. So when we calculate, we will get 27 upon EI and it will also act from its centroid of the triangle. So we know that slope on the real beam is equal to shear force on the corresponding point in the conjugate beam. So we, we are interested to find slope in point A and B. So suppose if we want to find theta A, we should calculate the 
shear force in conjugate beam at a dash so this is what i meant theta a is nothing but shear force at a dash and in case of simply supported beam it is equal to r a dash only so we will calculate the support reaction at a dash how we do that we will use the equations of equilibrium in the conjugate beam so we know that i will use the first equation of equilibrium sigma f y is equal to 0 so we can say that r a plus r b is equal to total load so what will be the total load total load will be the sum of these two area area 1 is 81 upon e i and area 2 is 27 upon e i so we can write that r a plus r b is equal to 108 upon e i now we will take moment about point b as we want to calculate r a dash so in this system there are two unknown r a dash and r b dash so if we want to find r a dash we should take moment about point b dash wherein the moment of r b dash will be zero so we are left with only one unknown in the equation in the mb dash so about this point this force r b r a dash will have a tendency to rotate clockwise and these two forces will have tendency to rotate anti clockwise so i have kept them on the either side of the equation so first force will be r a dash so perpendicular distance from here to here is 9 plus 3 so we can write 12 r a dash is equal to 81 into x1 and 27 into x2 what will be x1 so we will see this triangle this triangle the centroid will be at a distance 2 by 3 from the vertex this distance is going to be 2 by 3 of base so base is 9 so 2 into 9 by 3 is equal to 6 meters so total distance is 12 meter this distance is 6 meters so our x1 will be 6 so we will write a1 into x1 since we are taking moment about b so we have to find all the centroid from the b point only now what about x2 x2 is for this triangle so from vertex from vertex we have discussed that it will be again 2 by 3 so what is the base at this for this triangle base is 3 so 2 into 3 by 3 is equal to 2 meters only so when we solve this we put this value in this equation we will get theta a that is equal to r a dash and it is 45 upon e i now we can use this uh, we can use our sigma f y equation to calculate r b dash and uh, subtract it from the total load or else just for practice sake i have taken moment about point a so now we have to take moment about this point so r a dash will be not required in this equation so the force will be r b dash into 12 it has tendency to rotate anti-clockwise while these other two forces will have tendency to rotate clockwise about this point a so i have kept it on the other side of the equation so we have to find this distance so total base is 9 so from vertex it will be 2b by 3 so we we'll calculate it as 6 what about x2 for x2 we'll, we know that this distance is 2 2b by 3 is so x2 will be total length 12 minus this 2 it will be 10 meters so in place of x2 we will put 10 and in place of x1 we will put 6 so we will get rb dash is equal to 63 upon ei which is nothing but theta b so both the slopes at both the ends are calculated and as we predicted that theta b is going to be greater than theta a because load concentration towards right support is more so rotation is more in the support near the support b now we come to deflection uh, at a dash and b dash bending moment is zero so deflection is going to be zero in the real beam and we are not interested to find it either so we are, we are interested to find deflection at c area 1 81 upon ei and this is area 2 27 upon ei and they are acting at their respective centroid ask our observer to stand here and uh, he is a lazy person 
so he will try to find which portion is having less forces so that he can easily find the bending moment equation bending mo moment equation can be calculated from either side of the section and will get the similar expression but it is always advisable to use the uh, convenient side so in this uh, in this case both the sides are having similar number of forces so generally we go by the left hand side of the section so right hand side forces we can eliminate so we are left with this point load ra dash value is known to us it is 45 upon ei and this force is 81 upon ei so we have to take moment of these two forces about this section so what is the distance this distance is b by 3 so what is base total length is 9 r a dash into 9 minus minus 81 upon ei into 3 and here we are not using clockwise anti-clockwise we are using sagging hogging concept for taking it as positive so r a dash because of r a dash the beam will bend like this so we have taken it as positive and because of this triangular load it has tendency to bend the beam like this shape this is negative so we have taken as negative so deflection at c is 162 upon ea so now we come to cantilever beam uh, cantilever beam is having two ends one end is built in in the wall or is, is fixed in the support also called as fixed end and the other end is unsupported also called as free end so we know that slope and deflection at fixed end is going to be zero and uh, we are interested to find uh, slope and vertical deflection at the free end convert the real beam into a conjugate beam so this is a given fixed beam with the point load at the free end so the bending moment diagram will be the bending moment diagram at any section will be minus w into x minus w into x so at x is equal to 0 bending moment will be 0 at x is equal to l the value of bending moment will be w into l and uh, just because this is hogging moment we have taken it as minus so now next step is to calculate the m upon ei diagram simply divide all the ordinates ei value so this is m upon ei diagram then we have to change the support so the free end becomes fixed and fixed end becomes free so the conjugate beam will look like this this is the length of the conjugate beam which is equal to the length of real beam support the fixed end is now free and the free end has now become fixed and the load is m upon ei diagram of the real beam so with this we come to our conjugate beam to calculate the slope slope at point a is going to be zero because ra dash is zero as slope on the real beam is equal to shear force on corresponding point in conjugate beam so we are interested to find theta b for that we will calculate shear force at b dash which is nothing but equal to rb dash so we will use the equation of equilibrium in the conjugate beam first equation we will use is sigma fy so the forces are like this so rb dash will be equal to sum of the total vertical force what is the total vertical force it is this area so the total area is half base into height so the total load rb dash or theta b is nothing but wl square upon 2 ei now this is our conjugate beam and we'll use it to calculate the deflection to calculate deflection at the free end so delta b deflection at any point is equal to bending moment at the corresponding point in conjugate b so we'll ask our observer to stand on the section that is b dash and now we'll take the bending moment at point b dash and consider all the forces on the left hand side of the section so what is the all the force uh, we are left with this force triangular force so we have to calculate the area and we have to multiply it with the x bar so area is as we already calculated it is wl square upon 2ei and what will be the centroid from observer the distance will be 2b by 3 so 2b by 3 so what is b b is l 
so we have to we will get x bar as 2 2 L of y 3 so we will get this value as delta b deflection at b that means free end is w l cube upon 3 i cantilever beam again with a slight variation now instead of this point load at the free end we are placed at place the point load at a distance a from the fixed end because of vertical reaction r a delta a will be zero and because of moment at a fixed end moment at a it will cause rotation at end a to be zero so we will calculate slope and deflection at point b and as well as at point c step by step how we convert real beam to conjugate beam first thing is we will make a bending moment diagram so this is the bending moment diagram at the point at this point the bending moment will be zero and moment will be w into a so this is hogging so we have kept it as w a that on the negative side we have drawn the bending moment diagram on the negative side of the line then we will divide all this value with the e i value so it will be w a upon e i so this is m upon e i diagram of the given beam now to convert this uh, to a conjugate beam the fixed end will be free end in the conjugate beam and the free end in the real beam will be a fixed end in the conjugate beam so this is our conjugate beam as we know that slope on the real beam is nothing but shear force on the corresponding point on the conjugate beam that is theta b on the real beam is equal to shear force at the corresponding point means b dash in the conjugate beam so to calculate support reaction rc dash we will use equations of equilibrium that is sigma fy we know that rc dash is equal to total vertical force so how we will calculate the total vertical force it is nothing but area of this triangle it is half base into height so base is a and the height is w a upon e i so theta b is equal to theta c is equal to w a square upon 2 e i how we can say that suppose we are standing here and we try to measure the shear force on the left hand side it is equal to area of this triangle and instead of b dash now we are standing at c dash now we try to calculate the area of the load on the left hand side so it will again be equal to area 1 only so from that concept we can say that theta b is equal to theta c because in the conjugate beam shear force at point b dash is equal to shear force at point c dash is equal to w a square upon 2 e i so in in this way we can say that in a fixed beam which is having a point load at some point a will have a deflected shape like this so this from here to this point the uh, slope will be same so this is going to be straight line this part will be curved this is curved and this will be a straight line so that way we can say theta b is equal to theta c deflection at point b so we are putting our section at point b and we will calculate the bending moment at b dash so bending moment at b dash and consider the forces on the left hand side of the section we will get only one force that is this triangular force and the moment of that force about b dash is nothing but a x bar so how to calculate a x bar a means area half base into height it is already calculated as w a square upon 2 e i and x bar it will be some will be here so this distance will be 2a by 3 2a by 3 so we will write x bar as 2a by 3 so we get the value as w a cube upon 3 ei deflection at point b is w a cube upon 3 ei now in the same problem if we want to calculate deflection at c we have to calculate bending moment at c dash so our section one observer is at c dash and now we will take bending moment at c dash to calculate the deflection at c so we will consider the forces on the left side of the section and what will be the moment it will be area into x bar so what is the area area is area we already calculated as w a square upon 2 e i now if we see in this right triangle the centroid will be at a distance 
a by 3 from the height of the triangle so from this side area uh, from this side centroid is at a by 3 so what will be this distance this distance will be nothing but l minus a by 3 l minus a by 3 so we can put this value here a is w a square upon 2ei and centroid is l minus a by 3 so this is the deflection at c in the given problem so this is an, uh, this is another problem in cantilever with the point load at the free end uh, but what we see is uh, beam is having two portion for the portion ab the value of ei is 1 single ei and value of portion bc the value is twice of ei so generally e is constant we don't change the material in a structure but we change the geometry of the structure that means we change the value of i so we'll try to find the slope and deflection at the free end and as we know that because of support reactions deflection at c and slope at c will be zero so this is the sequential step in which how we will make a conjugate beam so the first step is bending moment diagram which is not dependent upon the value of ei so simply divide so simply make the bending moment diagram it will be zero at this point and it will be 10 into 2 force into perpendicular distance is 2 so it will be 20 at this point since this is a hogging moment you can see this is a hogging moment so we have drawn the diagram on the negative side now to make conjugate beam we have to divide this bending one diagram by the value of ei so this 20 will when we divide it by 2 ei it will be 10 ei and this height was 10 so for this side when we divided it by 2 ei this portion is having modulus of elasticity ei as twice of ei so when we divide it we will get 5 upon ei whereas for this portion it will it will be 10 upon ei only so this is clear earlier it was a triangle now when we divided this portion bc portion with 2 ei we got a trapezium and for portion bc we simply divided it by ei so it still remains a triangle so ordinates for the portion bc is reduced by half so from 20 it is now 10 from 10 it is now 5.8 yeah. so first thing we will calculate the slope so slope we want to calculate at a which is now a dash for slope at a we will have to calculate reaction r a dash so we will use the equations of equilibrium and we know that theta a is equal to shear force at a dash or r a dash only so sigma f y is equal to 0 so we have to get the total load so ra dash is will be equal to area a1 plus area a2 so we can see that this is area of a triangle and this will be area with a trapezium so area of triangle is half base into height so area a1 will be area a1 will be 5 upon ki now a2 it is a trapezium for trapezium we know the formula is the sum of the parallel side into h by 2 the distance between them so the distance between the two parallel side is 1 distance is 1 so we will write as 1 by 2 into sum of parallel side so this height is 5 and this height is 10 so when we calculate a1 plus a2 we will get theta a or shear force at a dash is equal to 12.5 upon EI. Now when we check this for deflection and we are interested to find deflection at point A. So we will take bending moment at point A dash. So we will consider the forces on the right side of the section. So these two forces I have already marked. These are actually area of this area 1 and area 2. Now we have to find the x bar the position of these forces from the section 
so a1 and a2 we have already calculated so a1 is already known to us now this is a triangle so what is the base base is 1 and it will be at a distance 2b by 3 it will be at, this is 1 so this distance will be 2b by 2b by 3 and for trapezium area is 7.5 upon ei we have to find this distance this distance so from here to here it is already 1 from a to b it is 1 plus this is going to be x2 so 1 plus h by 3 into 2a plus b upon a plus b what is h h is the distance between the two parallel sides so it is 1 so uh, the parallel sides we have to name as a and b so what i generally do is the farther side i will name as a so from this from this side we are trying to measure the centroid position so this height i will name as a and this polar height i will name as b so it will be 2a plus b upon a plus b when we calculate it solve it it will give us 1.55 meters so now delta a we can calculate with this a1 x1 plus a2 x2 so 1 upon ei will take out and when we solve we will get this value so delta a deflection at a for the given problem is 7.46 upon ei